Pharaoh who arose and the Bible says he did not know Joseph. This, this new Pharaoh comes and unlike his predecessor, he has issues with the Hebrew people. So much so that he's burdened by them. He, he saw the growth and the development of the Hebrew people. Hebrew women just kept having babies. They just, they just kept being blessed. They were fruitful people and they multiplied. It says right in verse 7 said, and the children of Israel were fruitful and multiplied and increased abundantly. Mm -hmm. The land was filled with church. They were growing by leaps and bounds. And then verse 8 says, now there rose up a new king over Egypt who knew not Joseph. See, the prior king was nice to the Hebrew people because of his relationship with, with Joseph. But this new king was different. He, 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 he was intimidated. He said, you know, if we ever have to go to war, those Hebrew people may form a treaty with, with, with our opposition and fight against us. Uh, verse 9 says, the children of Israel are, 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 are more mighty than, than we are. So, so what he does is he sends his taskmasters uh, uh, to afflict them. He instituted a new government to, to cause pain, to burden them. But church, the more he afflicted them, the more they grew. Yeah, yeah. In other words, they, they were like baby's kids. They, just, they, they, they wouldn't die. They just multiplied. You know? and, 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 and verses... 13 and 14 says, and I paraphrase, they made the Hebrews work hard, made, made their lives terrible, made, made them work real hard, but even that didn't work. They just kept on growing and multiplying. So then the king tries genocide and homicide. He talks to the midwives. He says, he tells them, whenever baby boys are born, he said, kill them. If it's a girl, let them live, but Kill all the baby boys. And, 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 but verse 17 says that the midwives, thank God for midwives, feared God and did not obey. And they, and they, and they saved the men children alive. So the Hebrews kept on producing, kept on having babies, kept having baby boys. And Pharaoh says, now look, whenever a baby boy is born, throw him in the river. So the Hebrew people are being blessed, they're fruitful, but yet there was a burden placed on them by the king. And in this context, church, we see a prince being born in the midst of genocide, in the midst of government affliction. There arose a daughter of Levi. And this daughter was known by her faith. You don't have to have a whole lot of money to be a good mom. You don't have to have a whole lot of education to be a good mom. The writer of Hebrews says, by faith, did this woman move to the forefront to make an indelible impression upon human consciousness to this very day. Joseph had married Amram, and when Pharaoh issued the decree to kill all the boys, Joseph read, and Amram said, since God has given us older children, Miriam and, and Aaron. We, and we know God has not given us this child for no reason. We're not going to throw this child away. Amen. No, no. Joseph has said, I'm going to keep the child. I, I, Joseph is a good mom. Uh -huh. She gives birth to who has become one of the most important biblical characters of all time. Amen. Moses. Amen. Moses led the, the children out of, out of Israel, out of, out of Egyptian captivity. The same Moses who's compared to Jesus in the New Testament. You would not have a Moses if you didn't have a good mom named Joseph. In my opinion, she's a, a good mother. Somebody might ask, all, of all the mothers in the Bible that I could have talked about, why is she so good? A few reasons and we can go. Number one, she's a good mama. Yes. Because she saw potential yes. in her child. Yes. She saw potential. Verse 2. And the woman conceived, Joseph had conceived and bare a child. Here it is. And when she saw him, that he was a beautiful child. Yeah, yeah. She didn't say, 
you look just like your no good daddy. <laughs> She didn't look at me and said, your daddy was crazy, his daddy was crazy, and you're going to be crazy too. You know, he, he did this and he did not. No, see, he wasn't nothing and you ain't going to be nothing. No, she didn't do that. When she saw that the child had potential, even though there was a drastic and deplorable environment when the child was born, even though there was a threatening society, there was something about that child that made her look beyond the devastation of the time and see that God had a purpose for that child. And so now her intentions were to cultivate what God had placed in the child. What do you see? Ain't gonna be no hoop today. What do you see in your children? Do, do you speak as a good mama, bringing forth the potential that God has placed in that child? How do you see your child? Do you see that God has given them a wonderful destiny in spite of their difficulties, in spite of the fact that they're wrong a lot? How many mothers concentrate on what's Wrong with the child. Always looking at the child's complexities and, and what the child is not doing right. Have you ever thought about that they're doing something right? Yeah. We're so quick to jump on children when they're wrong, when they're bad, but do we celebrate the goodness in that child? It's sad when we can't see anything positive because we're always looking at the same. And, and then we're always pushing the child to go further and further, sometimes even beyond their limits, and we never stop to say, I love you. You did a good job. You don't have to be a straight-A student. I'm going to push you to be a straight-A student, but I'm going to love you regardless. All you got to do is do the best that you can. And see, sometimes, some parents forget you want your child to be on the honor roll, and you barely made it through the line. <laughs> Children ain't gonna like this. 
There is some stuff you got to say, I won't let get to my child. There is some stuff I'm not going to allow in my house because if it gets in my house, it might contaminate my child. So, so some stuff I got to protect my child, but some stuff I got to keep away from my child. What have you allowed your children to come in contact with? You, you, you got to be careful with what you let them listen to. They can't listen to all that stuff. Matter of fact, most of the music they playing now is just downright ratchet. Yes. <laughs> you can't let them listen to all that. You need to find out what they're listening to. Go in their room if you have to. I know they get grown. You know, about 12 now. <laughs> They get, they get weird going talking about why you in my room? Huh? When can I have my own privacy? Tell them when you get your own job. I mean, I mean, you're 50 years old. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Can't do nothing else. Lord, so I'm putting him. I'm putting him in your hand. Bible says the oldest child. Miriam was standing not too far. The Pharaoh's daughter came to take a bath. And y'all know the story. When she, when she saw the ark, she, she sent her maids to go get the ark with Moses in it. The maids go get the ark and bring it back. She takes the baby home. Watch this. Raising him as her child. Yes. Oh, yeah. Now check this out. She is an Egyptian. Mm -hmm. Moses is Hebrew. She takes a Hebrew baby home and raise him in an Egyptian home. As an Egyptian. What's the significance? That gives us a clue about Moses dermatological pigmentation. He couldn't be raised as an Egyptian. You do know Egypt is in the heart of Africa. <laughs> he couldn't be raised as an Egyptian, as an African, unless he looked like an African. <laughs> That's another message. I gotta go. <laughs> Pharaoh's daughter took baby Moses and said, I'm gonna raise him on my own. She looked at and saw Miriam, who was Moses' sister. Miriam said, Would you like some help? You need some help with this child? Understand, this is her brother. Would you like some help? You want me to go get a woman? <laughs> <laughs> You want me to go get a woman to help you raise that child? Come on. Huh? You know what she did? Mira went home and got her own mom. She, she went home, got Joseph in. She brought that Joseph in to raise her own child. And guess what? Guess what? And she got paid to do it. It's right in verse 9. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take the child away, nurse it for me, and I'll pay you your wages. <laughs> it's right there in the Bible. Look, look. And the woman took the child and nursed it. I'm through. I'm through. But Joseph had saw potential in her child. Joseph had protected her child. And then when it got too big, he put, she put her child in the hand of the Lord. If you got a good mama, come on and praise God. If, if you had a good grandmama, come on and praise God. If you had a good aunt, you Thank you.